What's up my fellow devs and welcome back to the dev shop. So today is the first video that we're going to get into that talks about how to use Lua inside of Lumberyard. Real quick before we get started, if you haven't joined the Discord, please do so. If you have any questions outside the video or want to join the community where we talk about games and game engines and things like that, don't forget to join. So let's jump right into it. What we want to do is create an entity real quick. So we want to create entity. You can leave it um, defaulted name. We want to add a component, Lua script. And we're just going to do this because we want to be able to see the updates in the editor when we make changes. So the next thing we want to do is go to tools, Lua editor. All right, I'm just going to leave this over here like this. And as you can see, we have our editor. We have uh, a buttload of buttons, uh, most notably the open, the new, save, save all, undo, redo, cut, copy, and paste, and so forth. We want to hit the new button and go to, I'm gonna go to samples project, scripts, and I'm gonna call this uh, learning Lua. All right. and. We're going to actually add that same script here so we can see the updates to the inspector. All right, so the first thing that you want to get down is how to set the basic structure of every Lua script. All right, so the first thing you want to do is we want to use local. And then we're going to set a name for the, for the table, which is what Lumberyard sees your Lua script as. Uh, think of it like a class. So we're just going to call it learn equal sign brackets. Hit enter and then I'm going to call say return. I know how to spell that. <laughs> return learn. All right. Now under those brackets we want to do function learn on activate. And then we want to close it off with end another function learn on deactivate close it off with end that right there is your basic structure for a Lua script inside of Lumberyard every script that you're ever going to write or that you're going to download or copy off of will have this structure here all right so the next thing we can do is populate a, a properties table so we want to go in, inside of the brackets here and type properties capital P equals brackets brackets now we have a properties which is uniquely interfaced inside of the lumberyard code to be able to update the inspector as you populate your properties window or your properties table rather so let me save that. So let's talk about the types that can be added inside of the properties and the types in general that we can use inside of Lua. So of course we have string. So I'm going to say string name equals Bob. Put a comma. Let me save that. And you will see over here we have Bob. It updated automatically because we're running the asset processor we're just checking for any changes in the engine that needs to be you know compiled and, and and taken care of so we can see it automatically we have booleans so we can say boolean we can say true save that we have a boolean with the check check and check off we have um, numbers so we can do age equals five save that we have age we have our numbers here let's see we have we have what you would call a reflected class inside of lumberyard there are quite a few options but the main one that lumberyard makes notice of is the entity id so if i wanted to do uh let's say i wanted to track my follower 
So I'll do follower entity ID save. You will see here that I have follower. So I guess more important, let's name this camera. So now if I wanted to track my camera's movement or if I wanted to detach my camera and write logic for how it moves around the player instead of parenting the camera to the player, I would use something like this. We also have arrays, so we can say my array equals one, two, three, four, five. As you can see here, we have an array, and if I drop it down, we have one, two, three, four, five. You can pretty much use any type inside of an array. So if I want it, I can do my array equals entity ID, entity ID, entity ID, close that off, give it a comma, and now I have an array of three entity IDs, which you can make use of. And last but not least, you can do groupings. So let's say, let me go ahead and erase this real quick. Let's say we want it, uh, let's save that. Let's say we want it player movement. So I'm gonna do player movement equals. So we'll create another table inside of the properties table. Give it a comma and make sure that you're making use of the commas after each entry or each line so lumberyard knows when to separate so i can do movement checks equals so another table comma let me try to put a comma here just just because hit save and then inside of here i'm going to put uh, speed equals 10 and inside of movement checks, I'm going to put uh, is running equals false. If I save that, you can see now that I have two groups, movement checks, player speed, and they all have their own variables inside of that. Now to take note that this is kind of a pain, the editor or the inspector rather, um, alphabetizes your groupings automatically so if you were to set this up inside of your script over here nice and neatly ordered all the variables the way you want it to look and what comes first that's it's the inspector doesn't respect that so it alphabetizes all that so I kind of sent that to the Lumbiard team that that's uh, undesirable but we'll see how that turns out but keep that in mind when you're creating your groupings and your variables inside of the properties table one last thing I want to show you guys with the properties table is that if I was to take speed and what I want to do actually is uh, actually add some brackets. And I'm going to say the default value, sorry, the default value is equal to 10. And I want to have a description equal to, uh, say the value that determines the player's speed and I'm gonna close that off close the brackets give my comma hit save and the speed didn't change but if I was to click and hover over speed we now have a tooltip that states that description that I just uh, wrote out inside of the properties window so that comes in handy if you are working on a team and they need to know what that value is for or, you know, you can probably think of other uses to use that. I mean, tooltips are great in general, so you can have descriptions on what your values do and why you have them. This is what you will call a variable attribute. There are other attributes that can be used inside of the properties table, but I found that some of them either stopped working or are being revised. So I'm not gonna touch on them right now, but if you want, there's documentation on it where you can do like min and max for numbers. Uh, you can do step values for the numbers. So it can get pretty cool and pretty elaborate um, so that you're you have fine control over your values inside of the properties table All right, the last thing I want to talk about in this video is variables Now we have I would say three types of variables in lumberyard We have the global variables that lumberyard provides that I don't really use often 
you have your own global variables that you can use inside of your scripts and then you have local variables so for that we need to actually go to target and make sure that we set the project configurator that will give you access to your global variables if you needed them or wanted to learn about them or see what they are but for our own created variables what we want to do I'm gonna do it inside of on activate so if I was to create a global variable, I have to reference the table that we're in, which would be the learn table. So we're gonna, we're gonna have to prefix our variables with self so that we can use it throughout the whole script. So self dot speed equals 20. And then that's a very one. I can use that anywhere inside of my script. Consequently, if I wanted to use a local variable, which is set by the scope of whatever that whatever brackets that you're in meaning that if i was to set a local variable inside of on activate it's only valid inside of on activate nowhere else inside of this script so if i was to say local player speed equals 10 this does not work inside of on deactivate or any other function that i might create in the future it's only is is valid inside of this scope of this function all right and one last thing about variables if I was to create a property um, so let me go ahead and delete this real quick Hit save let's create a uh, variable inside of the properties for movement equals 40 I don't know something like that for me to access this movement for the script, I need to follow a series of uh, accessors to access that property. So let's say if I was to do self, so we're talking about our, our learn Lua script, I need to go to properties so that I know I'm talking about that particular table, and then movement. And as you can see, it will highlight black when it's spelled correctly, and it will highlight every instance of that in the script so that they know that you're talking about the same thing which kind of gives you a validation that you spelled it correctly and that you're referring to that variable but yeah that does it for the video guys uh, we learned how to set the structure for our Lua scripts how to create a properties table and how to populate that with different types such as strings booleans arrays uh, reflected types like entity id how to create global and local variables and how to pull variables from your properties table so that when you make edits inside of the inspector, it will affect the gameplay instead of you having to open up the script every time to change values. Don't forget to like this video. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. I have video content every week unless I am preparing or taking a break. But other than that, hope you guys are having a very dope day. Hope you guys are prospering in your projects. And until next time, keep developing. Thank you.